there is a pent up demand for restoring business as usual. A lot of projects were held uh, during the COVID years and the need for saving energy and improving comfort as people come into the offices is quite large. So this year um, is already very busy. And what you're saying is absolutely accurate in that it was uh, limited to the larger cities and the large enterprise organizations, but that was something of the past. What our experience has been over the last few years and what we anticipate is going to continue is a lot more demand driven largely by two factors. Number one, the increasing cost of labor. Uh, number two, the increasing cost of energy. So as both of these factors are starting to impact life beyond the metros, you know, MSME organizations, SMB organizations, government organizations, which in the past had not really embraced building automation. We're starting to see a lot of renewed interest from these sectors which traditionally had not gone in for it. So sectors like uh, automotive engineering, sectors like hospitality, uh, smaller healthcare clinics, places in the upcountry tier three, tier four cities. So that's starting to happen. And we as vendors can sort of build on that latent demand by, as Bob mentioned, increasing the awareness, making the accessibility better, which is why we are here to partner with uh, specifying engineers, contractors, systems integrators, so as to be able to reach out to these customers as you know their own evolution comes up to the point where they're looking at these technologies. The 75F is a full stack IoT BMS. An IoT BMS is different than conventional systems in the way that it is architected in a way that is working out of the box and networked automatically to bring much more data online um, and it's cloud forward. The cloud forward design gives us the ability for advanced features like artificial intelligence and machine learning and predictive analytics. These things are all new to the industry and providing much better energy efficiency and comfort than a traditional system. Yeah, the residential segment is an enormous segment uh, in the Indian market. So this really has a trickle-down effect. So starting with the large tech parks and the commercial establishments, we are now seeing interest in uh, large warehouses, malls, retail chains, uh, diagnostic clinics. So we are servicing that demand. It will take a little bit more time for this to populate to the residential segment. One of the reasons is that the energy bills tend to be fairly low in a residential segment. So to go in for an automation solution that automates and saves you energy, it will take a little bit of time for that to happen. But there is interest uh, as larger homes are getting deployed and as people are looking at greater automation to be deployed. We expect that in the next few years, the residential segment will also pick up. I think the examples to look at are uh, close to India, outside India, in the Middle East, for example, or in Singapore, where you have mixed-use kind of buildings, where you have retail on the ground floor and then residential on the upper floors, and a centralized kind of system providing uh, cooling or heating, as the case may be. The demand is definitely there in these kind of buildings. So the same will happen. It may take a little bit of time in India for that to come up. So by using uh, features like artificial intelligence and machine learning, we can look at the behaviors and patterns of buildings and get ahead of the demand. We can reduce the cooling demand by being better about uh, anticipating the effects of weather, the effects of occupancy, and the effects of indoor air quality for the best sequences of operation. There are two parts to your question. So the first one is about whether India is a developing or a developed country. Clearly, looking at various metrics and parameters, it is a developing country. But the potential is there for India to leapfrog technologies and actually get very close to or if not overtake some of the more developed economies. I think the mobile telephony is a typical example where India probably has leapfrogged many technologies. The energy efficiency space is another one where we have the potential to be able to, by the sheer demand and the sheer volume that we have in this part of the world, be able to innovate and come up with new technologies which are effective and yet affordable. So the opportunity is there for us to leapfrog technologies and get up to the developed world in that space. Uh, with regard to the policy framework, uh, it can act as a catalyst and it is definitely something that we are looking forward to. For example, the recent initiatives that the government has 
rolled out with regard to incentives uh, for a certain certification or a certain level of efficiency being achieved for commercial buildings is a very welcome one. And uh, we as players in this space look forward to more standardization and more such measures being rolled out. So the technology exists, the demand exists. Now it's a question of the policy framework coming in, being transparent and effective, and then probably the money that is required for clients to adopt it and for vendors like us to be able to make it more affordable will also come. When it comes to improved efficiency and comfort, it's all about sensors, it's all about data. With IoT, we can deploy far more sensors in, to get a much higher density of data in the building. This gives us the ability to create a very granular digital twin in the cloud for analysis and insights for the facility managers. Certainly, sustainability is a very core to our uh, existence and to our mission. So on the one hand, we provide sustainability-based solutions to our customers. So using that and building on top of the platform, we're able to uh, save enormous amounts of energy for our clients, which in turn ensure that given that India is a coal-based energy uh, economy, there's an enormous amount of uh, coal that we end up saving or carbon dioxide that we end up saving, which doesn't go into the atmosphere. So on the one hand, that is how we contribute to the sustainability uh, drive. Uh, secondly, we manufacture our products in India and we work with manufacturers or contract manufacturers who have very sustainable operations and systems. So for example, restriction of hazardous substances, ensuring that they're adhering to ISO 14001. So that way we look at the entire chain of sustainability. And lastly, as a emerging corporate ourselves, we try and give back to society wherever we can. So whether it is a tree planting drive by our employees or organizing a, a drive whereby they would save energy and to the equivalent, we would be able to give back something to some of the very backward parts of the country. We've organized numerous drives like that. And in doing so, we try and ensure that whole circular economy and the aspect of giving back to society uh, which is a key tenet of the sustainability initiative continues throughout the organization. Believe it or not, our biggest challenge is just awareness. Uh, the technologies themselves work very well, but it's new. And of course, all new things face the challenge of not being the same as the old status quo. And so we're facing these challenges by addressing the market through partners. We are partnering with the consultants and with the contractors and energy engineers to raise awareness with their customer base. Certainly happy to. So the technology that we at 75F are promoting is essentially of an IoT-based BMS solution. That includes various cutting-edge technologies like cloud computing, the Internet of Things, machine learning, artificial intelligence, wireless radio frequency communication, all of these are embedded in our products, whether it's our hardware or software solutions, and all of them have been showcased here. And we hope to drive this message of using the latest technologies to make it more accessible and affordable to our customers while making them more comfortable and saving energy in the process. We're helping businesses by bringing automation to places that haven't been before. Because our technology is so much more accessible, everything works out of the box. The networking is pre-made. All of the analytics are already existing. It's bringing automation in places where it had been too uh, cost prohibitive in the past. And so now uh, we can bring those energy savings technologies and sequences um, to all buildings. We have a comprehensive uh, security design uh, that starts with the building itself. The systems are using secure socket layers to connect to our cloud services, and our cloud services are hosted in the Microsoft Azure uh, platform. Plus, uh, we are uh, partway through the SOC 2 compliance procedure, and we have a preliminary letter, and it looks like we're going to be getting SOC 2 within this year. For new developments this year, offering this year include managed services, uh, which is where our team can optionally look in and help facility managers uh, review the performance of buildings and alert them to trends and problems that are having in a proactive basis. Uh, we're also offering more advanced plant controls. 
Uh, so chiller plant monitoring CPM is a feature that we're offering now. And uh, also the hypostat. Uh, the hypostat and Helio Node are two new devices that we're uh, bringing forth this year, both of which are packed with indoor air quality sensors that provide a complete IAQ and building management system in a single device.